hey, guess what? We're going to animate this dude now. We will create a very basic camera rotation going around the microphone. And then we will move the stand up and down and we will animate how this one rotates too. Okay, very good. So with all that done, I will try to be very brief, not to get myself lost in nerd talk and be down to the point. We will cover the most important elements as an introduction into animation. So first we would like to have another viewport piece. And then there we will put in the timeline. And this is basically, well, the frames. Up here, we can load in just the viewport. That's where we'll put the camera into. Okay, very good. Talking about camera, we need a camera. Shift A, camera. Let's set this all to zero. Then we bring the camera back along the x-axis, rotate it to 90. We can scale the icon down. Yeah, very good. Then here now we go into the camera. Uh, yeah, we can keep this at view for the moment. That's fine. Here, let's set this to uh, 500 by 1000 because this the object is vertical. We make an image that is vertical. And you see here now I framed this a little bit better. The camera focal length, maybe 70. So it's less perspective there. Very good. Maybe a little bit higher up. Okay. Very nice. So we can literally animate everything. Uh, size, material, light, rotation, position, everything. Animation is also a really fun activity. Definitely the biggest time sucker uh, it is on Earth. So we, when we do animation, we want to work. This is really key to successful animation. We want to work very effectively. Not that we're lazy, but animation is labor intensive. So we don't want to get lost in too much work. Now that's not all very scary, but no worries. That's the reason why I'm here. I will show you very interesting shortcuts or not shortcuts, effective methods. So this camera, we would like to rotate around. Technically speaking, let's say in real life, we have a camera and that should ro go around an object. We need to put down a track. So in 3D, that basically would mean I will draw a spline or a path and then tell this one to run across that path works. But much easier is, now that's again 3D modeling and 3D animation where all the magic trickery comes in, we can make this camera look at an object as a child and then rotate the parent. So let's do that. Shift S. Oh, is this important? Uh, 3D cursor at the world center. Shift A and let's add an empty. An empty is just um, a reference object in 3D space has no geometry, doesn't render. There we are. We can set this maybe to 100. We have different styles to visualize it. Maybe go with the circle. Okay, very good. Now, the camera and then shift click onto the circle, sorry, the empty object and parent. Now, when I click on the empty and move it, you see how the camera follows it. Same like how when we select the rubber, not there, the, the foam ring, everything moves here. Same ideas. So when I select this and to make animation very easy, I will turn off the X, Y, and Z rotation. If I now press R, you see how this rotates around it. Yeah, pretty cool, no? Easy. Okay, so what is now this timeline also for? I'm going to introduce you to your best friend in animation, keyframes. So what's a keyframe? So we're not going to rotate this piece one degree, go to the next second, one degree, go to the next second, one degree. And that's how we did 
animation traditionally before we had computers. Today, we will actually tell the software, hey, make 180 degrees and then blend everything in between. So this is kind of like the starting pose. And I will press I to insert a keyframe. And for the keyframe, we just want to key in or capture capture frame the rotation there. Very good. So then let's go to 100. And you see this is green now. And then let's rotate this. So you see negative or positive goes left or right. I will type in 100. Sorry, 180. So it's really on the other side. And you see nothing is here. And this is orange. That means this got moved. And then press I. And add another keyframe. Okay. Look at that. And you see, zoom, 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 zoom. Okay, I think I mentioned before, you can really get lost in time. Let's go to 200, and then we type in 360, and make a keyframe again, rotation. If we now press play, like on a video recorder, for those who still have those, and you see, there it runs. Beautiful. The animation goes um, beyond 200. So let's actually go to image and then f uh, not image the output properties in here set this to 200 frames. So start and end. So now when we do this, zip, there you see it rotates nicely around. And then it would restart. And you noticed how it starts slowly. And then it stops slowly. There's a so-called ease in and ease out happening. When I go down here more than here, you can also see. So we have a rotation for uh, X, Y, Z, all these things, object transformation for this part. So this is kind of like where you can see where these keyframes are. Now, let's go to the graph editor. So there is, you see more happening here. Uh, scroll wheel, zoom in and out, middle mouse button, move around. Um, control middle mouse button, we can scale horizontally and vertically, you can see how we can compress this. Okay, so what is actually going on here? What do we what do we see? Here's a graph, there's a graph. Now, you can see that the z axis is captured. Now, X and Y, there's nothing really happening because it's not really rotating. And then here we have a start point. There we have a midpoint. That's the keyframe we created at um, 100. And then here we have a keyframe at the end, 200. Okay. And you also can see how this curve blends nicely. So this curve goes slowly horizontal and then it changes at value. So think about it this way. So time is running, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, and there's not really much rotation happening. And then with more frames, more rotation is happening. And then to the end, the amount of rotation per frame is slowing down. So you have a nice soft start and soft end. But if we want to make a loop of an animation, that's going to be visible. Okay click on a point and then you also see these handles happening there. No? Okay. Um, so we want to change the interpolation of these control points. We can go to, let's see, where is it? Key interpolation 
uh, mode, there it is. So what's interpolation now? Uh, constant linear, let's go to linear. And hold on, uh, I think I, I said interpolation, I meant vector uh, handle type. Sorry, it was my fault. Okay. So the interpolation, sorry, this, this was actually meant, this is more, we will go into this too. I, I made actually a, a slight mistake. I meant more the handle type. So you see how this is very linear. When I move this one up, you see there is like uh, a linear transition. So let's go to frame zero. And there you see how at a constant level, this is rotating. It's kind of like if we pay attention to now to here, it's really looping. This midpoint in the center, we can, by the way, move around. Then you see it's a very fast and then a very slow animation. We can have more fun, move this part in between. We actually want to have a start and an end. So this key point, we will be able to delete. Before we do this, press N. I will move this up a little bit and let's take a look at what we have here. So this is the active keyframe and it currently is when I move this up and down here, we have the time no? zero to 200 and then here the value. So what's value that's actually in degrees because we do the rotation and that's the amount of rotation. So now, right now it would rotate 360 degrees. And when it reaches there, it plateaued. It doesn't rotate anymore. So these points go up and down to define the amount of rotation. And this is defining uh, left and right when this happens. Very good. Okay. Then X and delete that keyframe. Okay. Very good. It's gone. Because honestly, for this very simple spin, all we need to do is have a very simple rotation. Very nice. Cool. So we have this covered. This is great. There's really, I mean, there's obviously a lot more to it, but I try to really only capture the most important elements, the building blocks. The rest then really comes also with practice. What we now would like to do is we want to bring the uh, the microphone into a basic form, and then make the arm go up and down, and also maybe rotate the the mic itself. So I went back to frame zero. This is good. Um, I go actually here to this view. Very good. This is my parent, so I move this one down. This is the, the base that's rotated. So I set this to zero. Oh, okay. Um, let's set this to 90. So we see this from the front and then this here we set to zero. This way you see, I'm, I'm locking actually X and Y by the way. And if we do it this way, there you see, I can rotate the sliders here and the object rotates along its, well, kind of like its own local orientation. See, it's the Y axis actually. Okay, very good. So I'm bringing everything into a neutral pose. Let's take a look um, how this, this feels. Okay, so when we, when we bring this actually up a little bit. Yeah, at one point we run out of space, but we're not bringing this piece too far up anyway. Okay, so this is actually quite nice. Good. Now let's say this is our starting point. So I for location this time, 
and then maybe at let's say 100 this piece goes up and then at 200 it goes down okay let me go back to 100 you see i didn't really move the part i will move this one up now and when i press i and say location it will override actually that location very good good yeah Rip. there we can see you now when we spin through it that actually this looks really quite quite nice um yeah what do we have here there so what's actually going on here um you see how many values i'm moving the piece uh when i zoom in here i felt like why is this point actually not moving up actually it did move up now i'm working in millimeters here right now so it's really actually truly going up and down there you can see the value but from from viewing out more this looks like a flat heartbeat blind like nothing is happening but actually it really it really does so you see we might have to move in a little bit so let's go back to 100 where we have that keyframe there it is we can click on this and also this is the value for going up with shift left click then i can move this a little bit further up i can adjust the value right there on the um, the keyframe and then i don't have to press i one more time because i'm overriding it so when I bring this one down, let's say to 270, I didn't do this here. You see this value is still 274. If I press I and say location keyframe, it overrides it. So it's not, or it's kind of creating a new keyframe, but it's overriding the previous. So it's not we really having extra keyframes. Okay, very nice. Yeah, so that's good. Now we also would like the the mic to rotate. So let's go back to our basic pose. That's where we have to go back to. So this is our uh, neutral rotation. So let's press I for rotate. We can go back to 200. That's where it should stop. Okay. And then in between it should rotate yeah by how much let's say i don't know uh, let's say minus 90. okay i and rotate you see now the curve actually goes down because that's negative rotation look at that isn't that cool? Whew. Looks very mechanical. Now we just need some strobe lights, some party music, and then we can have fun. And then uh, two days later, your relatives will stop by and say, hey, it's maybe time to take a shower, go to the toilet, maybe eat something. Okay, very good. Cool. Um, Tiny details are always kind of fun. So maybe we can try to rotate also this pin. So we will do an I for rotation. Then we go back to here, there, to 200. So what happens when we uh, what's actually the axis let's see so local so it's it is the x-axis yeah let's say 360 that is one turn 
um, multiplied by six. So 2160 degrees. And then I for rotation. Well, we see that curve is really large. Cool. So if we play this, there you can see how this rotates up and then it rotates down. It's kind of a fun effect actually. Yeah, okay, very good. Um, let's uh, let's do a play. So I press simply spacebar and there it's rotating. Yeah, it's actually kind of funny. It's kind of stealing away the attention a little bit. But it's kind of cool. It's also um, 24, so it's a little bit of a slow animation. It's fine. The next challenge would be, okay, how can we condense everything further down? Maybe how can we fit everything into a 150 frame, 100 frame animation? Yeah, so the camera is actually pretty, pretty good. Now I only animated the empty the camera is, is at. So now I can press G and Z, I think. So not G and Z, I can bring this one further down. Maybe bring this a little bit more in, maybe a little bit to there and then see. I right, see so I'm actually keeping everything inside the frame or well, maybe a little bit further out. Yeah, okay. Very good. If you want to <clears throat> remove an animation from an object, you have to remove all the keyframes. So we can go into select an object, turn on all the features we see here. You see this is rotation. When I click uh, this one, you see this is just location. So there are different elements that can be captured and you press a x and you would delete everything and then you see that rotation for that empty is gone very good so to save this as an animation let's do a very quick scene setup and materials very basic materials so this will be simply black um, it's kind of, I mean, it's a cast metal, but it has a coating on it. So here, a little bit specular, some roughness, very good base color. We can set to this. Also the render engine, we will, uh, we will use EV, which is kind of like, um, a very fast kind of like game station, um, like quality. We can turn on the the look of this actually when we turn the rendering on. You see now we are actually in render mode. So this is real time, really fast and good. We need also a light. So let's uh, shift A and add an area light. In GZ, we can bring this one up. Very good. How does it look? Yeah, maybe okay. Maybe from the side we we rotate it over so we see actually the light coming from the side. Whoops, wrong direction. So minus 180, very good. Okay, let's look through the camera. Okay, and uh, maybe one, one fill light here from behind. Cool, uh, the lights are maybe a tick too strong. Five, okay, five. Yeah, let's leave it at this. Very, very good, beautiful. Then here, the the base, um, uh, we make the same like this. We control N, L, control L, make a link to the material. It links it, that's pretty cool. Here, this piece, should be the same like this, control L, link material. And we can call this cast metal or aluminum 
Let's call this simply metal there. Then this is maybe foam. We can make this also dark. Doesn't really have much of specularity. These dials, so buttons, like let's make them super high glossy. Um, and actually I will use the same color as my uh, microphone. So this is a nice crazy red and copy and paste colors actually works really good. I will do the same here. Um, wait, so U and U can be the same, control L there. This is actually aluminum, this should be enough, plastic, so plastic. Then all this is, I will call aluminum, which is more like a metallic, specular roughness. I keep it at the setting, that's actually pretty good. The mesh here is just metallic, that's fine. All these pieces here are, are the same as the aluminum body, there we are. Cool, um, and we have inside this kind of dark piece there. Cool, okay. Yeah, really nice. So you see like the, the animation goes around. So the camera moves, the lights stay, the object rotates. So it's actually really nice. The, um, this EV is um, a really good render engine in general. It's not 100% accurate because it's a graph, it, like it, it's just a real time engine. It lacks some realism. But for fast previews or animation, it is actually perfect. I set this on 50% on purpose because I want to check something first when I do rendering. Wow, this is really fast. Okay, good. So the next step that's important. We will go to the desktop and then let's say we make a folder called rendering here. Folder, new folder, rendering. And this folder I will accept there. So I am now class Kunan desktop inside the render folder. And I will save this as an AVI JPEG. So a video film. You can also ideally you want to save them as individual frames so we can later make them into a new uh, film itself but we will keep this um, as an AVI for the moment. Mac and PC, it works the same way. By the way, never forget to save. Very good. So uh, we're kind of set. The frame is set to 200. Very good. Let's go and hit render animation. And there you see now how step by step it's rendering each frame. I will take a moment. Oh, something interesting else is happening there. <laughs> Maybe well, it has the material actually on it. Oh, it is actually visible here, interesting. If you go YouTube and you Google um, Shrek animation mistakes, it's actually quite hilarious what box the animators faced when they were animating that movie. And there we are. Very good. So this is now actually a movie that was finished. When we then go to our desktop. Here's the file. It's very small. It rendered pretty fast. And I made it small on purpose so it renders quick. So I can preview is there anywhere an issue? Because nothing is more important. Sorry, nothing is more frustrating. That's also why it's important to check this than spending a lot of time on rendering, coming back, and then you realize, oh no, what happened there? What's going on here? So I'm I have an idea of what's going on. 
So in my timeline, I move a little bit to here, click this one. And then here I will turn back my outliner. So this is the main parent. There's the telescope, telescope arm and there it is already. I had this render flag turned off. So it showed up in the viewport, but it didn't show up in the final rendering. Yeah. Okay, very good. So that actually worked out. You see, um, saving this as an AVI JPEG is very easy. Um, black and white or PNG is good. Um, let's actually, you can also save this as a PNG. Um, then for example, we can save the, trans the background being transparent. So we click on render right now. So there it's kind of grayish. And then when we go to camera film and turn this into being transparent, and then render this, and you see it's empty. If for example, we would like to take this animation and load it into Final Cut Pro After Effects or, or something else. Let's say we would like to just put this on a website, have a really nice white backdrop. Um, so let's do a very simple fake thing. We make a huge cylinder and then we will take the top and the bottom and delete it. Um, camera is inside. Very good. There we are. Now I will shade smooth this cylinder, make it new, give it a nice white color, for example. Um, and I can maybe give this an emission of white. It's actually quite interesting. Now you see what's happening, how the, the object looks actually darker. And, and if I zoom in, it's not really changing it, but it's the eye contrast, how I see this darker to this gray compared to how I see now the white to the gray. The color is the same, it just looks darker. But anyway, turning this um, emission one, or let's say 10, is a really easy fake way to quickly turn this into, um, how could I say that, a nice white washed out background. And it's also pretty big that, for example, it doesn't necessarily emit any light or whatever. Okay, so the next step then would be, I would like to show you this for those who are interested in it. We will save this now as PNG images via um, RGBA. I will set this now also to 100%. So I will render this out, pass the animation, the rendering, and then when it's done, I will be back. So. Let's hit the render animate and I'm going to, yeah, come back when this is done. So then here we are, you see there are all the individual frames rendered out as images, pretty amazing. These frames can now be loaded into a movie making program, Final Cut Pro, After Effects, Adobe Premiere or whatever, and then can be created into a new movie and exported out. Again, the main reason why, for example, to render something out as images is if during the rendering something goes wrong and one frame is broken, I can replace that frame image and then from all this create a new video. If something is wrong with the video, then I would have to re-render the video or slice the video. It's just more things can go wrong and be more work afterwards. Okay. Good. Um, yeah, that basically sums up how to do a quick animation of a camera going around a microphone and then animating the microphone uh, in the stand too. And now as a bonus for those who are interested in, we learned how to animate position rotation. How do we do materials? And even they're super easy. Let's say here, uh, at frame zero, we keep this red. Okay, we go to the red color, press I for keyframe. And there you see now that this shader has 
a, um, a keyframe for the material. Then let's go to 200, and the end, and we'll do the same. So the start and the end color will be the same. And then here in between 100, um, let's say this will be orange. Cool. Okay, keyframe. Yeah. And then look at that. It's changing the color while animating. It's actually pretty cool. Maybe go to here and then there. Let's maybe make this blue and keyframe. Yeah. You can have a lot of fun with that. Yeah. So you see, literally, really everything can be animated from objects, position, scale, including the materials. So reflectivity could be changed, specularity, roughness, everything. Okay, and that's really everything. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Peace out.